This year is looking to be a much better year for PC enthusiasts, but will it be known as the year of the great GPU apocalypse? What will it take to make that happen, and is it already starting? Let's get into it. We are now more than a year and a half into what is the longest GPU mining boom we have ever seen, and that started with the launch of the RTX 3080 in September of 2020. GPU mining has absolutely ruined this generation of GPUs for gamers. If you needed to get a GPU, any GPU, new or used, then you would have to pay up to two times the MSRP of that GPU. Now this generation has just wore on me and last year I was really frustrated. It's kind of been a meme at the end of my videos where I show week after week how I am not able to get a GPU from the AMD store and this has been going on for a year. The frustration got high, so high that I created a series of videos in 2021 as I didn't understand why I was not able to get a GPU. All the conflicting reasons of silicon shortages, gamer demand, shipping crisis, and when all else fails, blame it on COVID, it didn't make any sense in the light of my ability to get all other PC parts at very good prices. CPUs, RAM, SSDs, all based on silicon, were available at MSRP or less. Power supplies and cases, which take up a lot of space on a shipping container, still widely available and at pretty good prices. Based on what I learned in those multiple weeks of research, the single biggest factor for the high prices was the profitability of GPU mining. Back then in my video, what was driving the high prices of GPUs, I said, If the profitability goes down, then the GPU miners start to dial down the prices they are willing to pay, and cards start to sit on the shelves at the high prices. And this past week, I didn't get my Newegg Shuffle notice for several days in a row, and I started to wonder what was up. And what did I find at Newegg? NVIDIA GPUs are now sitting on the shelves at the high prices. I like to look at two sources, Newegg Shuffle, or now just Newegg, and Micro Center, since they sell those GPUs without the huge retail markup. And of the two, Micro Center tends to sell closer to the prices AIBs charge. I look through all the prices and summarize them in a chart. It ranges from the 60 series up to the 90 series class of cards. And I group the AMD and Nvidia class of cards together as they were to compete head to head at launch. So the RX 6600 is available under $500, while the RTX 3060 is over $500. The RX 6600 XT is available around $600, while the 3060 Ti is over $700. The RX 6700 XT and the RTX 3070 are around $900. The 3070 Ti is incrementally higher at just under $1,000, while its competitor, the 6800 non-XT, is over $1,200. The RX 6800 XT is $1,350, while the new 12GB RTX 3080 is $1,500. The RX 6900 XT is available around $1,500, while the RTX 3080 Ti is closer to $2,000. Finally, the liquid-cooled versions of the RX 6900 are about $2,000, while the 3090 is more than $2,200. Now, I want to repeat that these are retail prices at Micro Center, and they are a best-case scenario. There are retailers around the globe that charge higher prices. The news here is not the prices, but rather that they are in stock. Why? As I showed in my video, why are GPUs so expensive, I showed the profitability of GPU mining of certain GPUs. If we compare the profits from back then to today, we can see the profits are less than half. The RTX 3090 was making about $8 a day, and now it is just about $3.5 a day. The RX 6900 XT was making about $4.66 a day, and now it's just about 2 bucks a day. And the RX 6600 XT was making $2 a day, and now it's only making about a dollar a day. If we take that same 9-month payback period, or ROI, that I found miners were most comfortable with, at today's profits, the RTX 3090 would have to be priced at about $950 to pay for itself in 9 months. The RX 6900 XT would have to be priced at about $550 to pay for itself in 9 months. Finally, the RX 6600 would have to be priced at about $270. All of these cards at today's prices will not pay for themselves in that 9-month payback period. The payback periods are now 1.5 to 2 years. That's how much profits have dropped. Why are the profits down? Since my last video, when will GPU prices go down, a couple of major changes have occurred. The price of Ethereum has been highly volatile and has declined over time, but... More significantly, the network hash rate has gone up by almost 
and the generated profits are getting divided into smaller and smaller payouts. You can check out those videos if you want to learn the fundamentals in more detail. They are still true today, but the market has finally started a trend in the other direction for good. This is a trend that started over the past couple of months. 3dcenter.org has been tracking GPU prices since the beginning of 2021, and their latest update in mid-February shows the third consecutive drop in average prices since the beginning of the year. And if we look at major retailers around the world like PC Case Gear in Australia, Case King in Germany, Scan in the UK, they have GPUs available for purchase, and now we are starting to see that trend here in the US. Why in those countries first? Well, the price of electricity is higher in those countries. If we look at this map of electricity costs where the darker red is more expensive, you can see that Australia and Europe are darker red than the US. So GPU mining became less profitable sooner than in the US. At this point, I know many of you are thinking, well, smart guy, if the GPU mining profits have dropped so much, what's keeping up the price of GPUs? Why are the prices still so high? Why have they not fallen back down the MSRP? And there is only one answer to that, and that is greed. Pure, unadulterated greed. Greed by retailers, greed by the AIBs, and greed by both NVIDIA and AMD. You see, as the prices went up, everyone in the chain wanted their piece of the pie. Retailers, wholesalers, and AIBs would increase prices up to what people would be willing to pay. And when I say people, I mean miners. I mean, if they didn't do this, then all of the profits would have gone to the scalpers. So it just makes sense to edge out the scalpers. However, now the miners are bowing out, leaving us gamers left with the high GPU prices. We are now in an era of where we went from scalpers scalping to corporations price gouging. And these corporations are going to be reluctant, very reluctant, to reduce the prices. This has been going on for over a year now, and they have been reporting record-setting profits every quarter to their investors. AMD and Nvidia just enjoyed their most profitable quarter ever, yet again. The shareholders of these corporations want to see profits increasing. Dropping prices drops profits and goes against what their shareholders want. When people say the high prices of GPUs is due to inflation, it is so misleading. Currently, inflation is just a small percentage. It makes me wonder if they know how to do math or even how to use a calculator. Inflation represents a small single-digit increase. If you say inflation is 7%, then an RTX 3070, which MSRP'd at $500, that $500 GPU should now cost $535. So inflation does not explain why those GPU prices are now $900 to $1,000. Also, you don't see that same price increase on CPUs either. The real reason prices of GPUs are high is simple. It's greed. By the way, if you like no-nonsense analysis like this, then like, share, subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments below if you skip this generation of GPUs and the high prices, and are riding it out until the next gen. Or did you buy, and if so, did you casually mine your money back? Getting back to the greed, GPU mining is the dominant reason GPU prices skyrocketed, and greed, all through the supply chain, is the reason that the prices are very slow to come down. What will AMD and Nvidia try to do to make these prices the new normal? How will this all unfold? We'll cover that next time. Thank you all so very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.